Let's say that you want to go somewhere on vacation tomorrow on a cool exotic island. One of the things that you will most likely do before that is to check the weather. So you do that and see on a website that it's going to be sunny. Yay, you are no happy because you will be able to enjoy a cocktail on the beach. However, when you arrive there, you realize that it's raining. You wait for the weather to calm down, you wait and wait, but at a point you get angry, so you check their weather forecast model and see that it has a 99 accuracy. Now you start wondering, how is it possible for a model with 99 accuracy to give such a bad weather prediction? It told me that it will be sunny today and it has been raining for several hours since I arrived and it doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon. Well, unfortunately the accuracy isn't a good measurement for this case because it's not telling you the whole story of the modeling problem. Let's see what I mean by that. Usually, when you train a machine learning model for classification, you have some label data. Let's say that this time we have only 1 and 0, which corresponds to it's going to rain or it's not going to rain. Most machine learning models are not trained to predict those labels directly, but instead they are trained to predict probabilities that are as close as possible to your training labels. And when you want to make a decision, 0 or 1, you usually employ a threshold. If your probability is greater or equal than this threshold, then you predict a 1. And if your probability is lower than this threshold, then you predict a 0. Unfortunately, this logic may lead to a phenomenon known as miscalibration, where the probabilities predicted by your model are disconnected from the real distribution of your data, and the usual metrics like the accuracy or the F1 score are not able to capture it. For instance, if you knew that there was a precipitation chance of 49%, which would be classified as not raining by the model, then you would still have thought of going on vacation in that period? Probably not. The Breer score, named after its inventor, the meteorologist Glenn Breer, helps us in solving this problem by measuring how well calibrated our model is. It is computed as the average square difference between the forecasted probabilities, FT, and the actual outcome of the event, OT. Now, let's look at an example to see it in action. So, suppose that we have the following labels and our model forecasts the following probabilities. Putting these numbers into the formula above, we get the Breyer score of 0.15. If we take another model that predicts the following probabilities for our data, then our Breer score improves and we get a 0.02. So this is also reflected in the final Breer score, which is closer to zero. In general, a perfect prediction would give us a Breer score of zero, while a completely mismatching prediction would give us a Breer score of one. And the closer our probabilities are to the real labels, the closer the Breer score would be to zero. And the further they are, the closer the Breer score would be to one. So yeah, that's basically the Breer score and what it computes. It gives us a sense of how well calibrated the predicted probabilities are. Pretty simple, right? Also, there is another score that you may encounter when measuring the calibration of a model, the Breer skill score, which tells us how good are the probabilities of the current model in comparison with a reference model. And this one is computed as one minus the Breer score of the current model divided by the Breer score of the reference model. If the Breer score is equal to zero, then it means that there is no difference in calibration. If it is lower than zero, then it means that the current model is worse. And if it is greater than zero, then the current model is better. That was the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like if you did. Let me know your thoughts about this score in the comments below and subscribe to be up to date with the new content on this channel. See you next time. Cheers.